little training on this uh, new fluid cooler that you have. Basically what you got is a box. There's a, a in this section here, there's a, a, a cold water basin that we can use as secondary cooling. There's spray water that goes up over top of the tower and then we'll go over top of the, uh, the uh, cooling to coils that are inside the middle section here. So basically you have a, a fan that does your primary cooling down to a certain temperature and it's all based on your exterior temperature, right? So once you get to, to that level, you can't cool anymore. So then you have to bring in the secondary, the secondary mode of cooling, which would be the spray water. We suck the water off the bottom with this pump, bring it up over top and we spray on top of the, the coils. That gives you a better cooling when your temperature's hot in the summer. These are your coils up top here, right? And then this is the, the, the cold water basin here that we would take and spray water over top. These are drift eliminators so that it keeps your splash down to nothing, right? But if you look up top there, there's the coils. So that, that's through this section right here, the, your cooling section up top is your fan, your reducer and your motor, okay? Um, one thing you wanna be careful, and I, I don't know if you guys have it set up, is, is your um, water treatment, what they should do, because it's all G235 zinc galvanizing in here. We told them that they have to pacify the zinc, otherwise you could create what's called white rust. So if you see any kind of like a white flaky stuff coming off this, it, it gets very costly after the fact to go in there and sandblast all this off and then re-galvanize everything. Otherwise then it just starts rusting away to nothing, right? Yeah. Legionnaire's disease, okay? You look at your quality of water in there right now, right? You can see that you got some, you, you probably should do some biocide treatment. So you want to have your water treatment guy come in and check for the, the biocides that uh, he needs to take and kill all that that algae that grows in there. There's also a recommended blowdown on this. So depending on, on, on your atmosphere around here, if you get a lot of wind, a lot of dust, a lot of dissolved solids in here, that your water treatment guy wants to be talking to you so that you blow this down out through the drain, you know, just to once a, once a shift maybe, once a day, depending on what is in the, in the, in the water, okay? So you wanna get your water treatment guy in here and, and go through the manual with him. There's a recommended blowdown procedure in here, but it's gonna it's gonna vary across the country on and how much stuff you actually have going in there. Yeah, it's all in the manual. I don't know, maybe once a day type thing. Just go through, listen, listen for strange noises, you know, vibrations, that sort of thing. Um, and and then check through your oil level and your gear reducer and that sort of thing. The the gear reducer has a five year oil uh, that's good for. So you don't have to change your oil and your gear reducer for five years. Okay. Uh, and what I would do is you, you're going to drain this in the in the fall, right? You're going to drain it so it doesn't freeze. Yeah, but you don't want the, the water to no. freeze, right? No. So you're going to go to your, your pump inlet, right? This is, this is away from the pump inlet. So the pump, you don't want to freeze either, right? I mean, it's insulated, but you know, you could have some problems. But I would say that the, this here, your, your fan, as long as the out, outside temperature is below your hot water temperature coming through the through the process, you won't even need this. Because okay. the, the fan will vary. Yeah, will yeah and, it, and it'll, it'll, it, you guys probably have a set point inside the building of where you want that kept at. Okay. And what it'll do is it'll go through the variable frequency drives and it'll it'll ramp the fan up and down okay. to match that. But then cleaned out every year? I, I, would, I would clean it, yeah. Okay. And, and, and I mean, you might want, or, or you leave it through through the winter clean and clean it in the spring. spring, but it should be clean before you go to use it. Yeah. Okay. Especially with the initial construction too, because I imagine there's lots of dust and whatnot from the construction yeah. that are still in there, in the basin. So, so you, you, yeah, you can, you can go right inside and just spray it all out through the drain valve, right? Okay. Yeah. And then you want to watch these here too. Where, where was that one spot? Yeah, you can get yeah, you're gonna, you, if these start plugging off these drift eliminators, you're starting to lose your airflow, right? And then you start losing efficiency again, right? It so. was in the other panels you there, you can see, you can see they're already starting to plug up. Replacement? Over. Yeah, you can get those replacements through us, yeah. Yeah. But there, these can be washed out too, right? Yeah. But you just gotta be careful because that, that's plastic and you might cut it with a high pressure wash. Uh, so each, each individual tower has an isolation power switch for the fan BFD. Uh, it's just a simple on-off switch. Off. And on, but 
you should also ensure, check with your controls uh, to ensure it's isolated at the panel as well. Your ins inspection cover right here is right here to access this slides up and then you can see right inside here, you can see the motor, the coupling and the gearbox, the fan gearbox with a shaft going up, which rotates the fan up top. You can also see it in through here. If you, if you step up here, you can see down in there too, to inspect for icing and, and whatnot too. If there is, sorry. Yeah, this is structural here, but you cannot step on the black fill here because that's not structural. There's structural beams in there too. If for whatever reason you need to access the inside there. Uh, it's, in, it's important to watch for icing on the fan because if the, fan, if the icing builds up on the fan, as, as it rotates around, eventually it's going to let go and it can potentially damage some of the internal components. Uh, one last thing to check up here on both, both units right here and on that one over there. This is the, the dipstick. It's the dipstick for the oil in the fan, the gearbox. So it's just, just like your car, there's a fill. And a, and a full line as well. Ba basic vibration is going to tell you right away that okay, there's there's something wrong. You've got you'll be able to hear it and and, and feel it too. It'll it'll be making weird noises. Watch for that. Just just common sense stuff. Watch watch for any uh, anything that's of concern. It's, it should be should be looked at. For daily inspection, we shouldn't have to check down the power and check in here. We should just be able to. If, if somebody just wants here. to pop their head over the top, make sure there's no ice in the winter time, then. And that's safe to do with it running? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as long as you're not going into the into the box at all. Hands yeah. Or like that. Yeah. Okay. But you would only open this to inspect if you suspect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you can check the oil for the gearbox. That's part of your daily maintenance. And, um, I believe on these towers there are vibration sensors that would shut the tower down if there's if a fan blade is damaged severely it's gonna it's not gonna tell you how much it's vibrating but it, it should uh, shut the um, the motors down or at least tell the VFDs to shut down. The, the training just essentially does not replace the manual.